Welcome back everybody, today I'm very excited to talk about The Walking Dead Season 9 mid-season finale titled Evolution. I think the last 5 minutes of this episode was some of the best Walking Dead ever. Here's my rundown of the episode. It definitely started off slow, but then there were still a lot of great moments in between the slow moments. And then around the 30 minute mark is when it started picking up and getting really good. The last 15 minutes was amazing, and like I said, the last 5 minutes was fucking incredible. Some of the best Walking Dead ever. So we're gonna go ahead and start talking about that end. So if you haven't seen the episode, go watch it and then come back to this video. But yeah, spoiler warning, but let's get started. I can't stop watching that scene where the whisper ducks underneath Jesus and just stabs him in the back. Like, that was so well done. And I, besides Rick biting out Joe's neck, I think that was the most badass kill of all time. Like, seriously, that was so well done. And it's even a better introduction than in the comics. I thought that was amazing. And then the whisper saying that you are where you do not belong, I think that was just icing on the cake. That was so perfect. I mean... This is how you do a cliffhanger, and I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. But we did lose Jesus. He is gone. He died. And it is a shame because we didn't utilize Jesus as much as we could have. He had so much more in him, and they didn't really use him that well. But he definitely went out like a beast. You know, him killing all those walkers at the end, I was like, oh, damn. this is some of that, that was some of the best Jesus we have ever had. And it ended off with that kill. But that kill was so good that I'm okay with Jesus dying. Like, that's how good that Whisperer kill was. I mean, wouldn't it be better if it was somebody else? I don't know. Because we want it to be a big character because it says something. You know, the Whisperers are no joke. This character death was not like... No one really saw this coming unless he looked at spoilers, obviously. But they didn't really focus on this character too much. It was just a kill except for the final five minutes when he decided to be brave. Yeah, I was like, okay, Jesus is dying. <laughs> um, but they didn't like... Because when characters die in The Walking Dead, they focus a lot on them throughout the episode. Like when Carl died, like that whole episode was for Carl, you know? So they didn't really focus on Jesus that much. And when he died, like that's how you do a death in The Walking Dead. And, that, and even though it's a shame losing Jesus, that death was so well done that I'm okay with it. And I think Michael Satcher Zemus did such an amazing job directing this episode. Like, he really made this episode terrifying. You know, I love the shot of the house. Um, there was, like, a high angle of the house, and we saw the fog around it. That was so nice. And then when they went to a graveyard and the gates, like, an old abandoned house. Like, they could not have done that better. And this really seemed like a horror movie. And when, when the Whisperer dropped Jesus and the lightning struck and we saw the face of the Whisperer behind the gates, like, so many little stuff like that made this episode, I think, the scariest episode by far in The Walking Dead. In the last 15 minutes, you know, some of the best Walking Dead ever. Also, when everybody was, like, cornered against the gates and we heard the whispering all around them, that's what I mean when I said this episode was, like, had some great directing that made it really scary. I also love the ending when Daryl were uh, cut open the whisper mask and raised it up i love that scene i mean everybody was so quiet like we can even hear the wind and then the whispers started picking up again and that's how you make a good cliffhanger and i was so quiet too you know throughout that whole scene after jesus got stabbed and i think that whisper introduction they could not have done that better and i'm so happy the walking dead with the walking dead right now because they're headed into an amazing direction and this has been the best season in years but let's move on and talk about some of the other stuff in this episode too because there's still some other great moments one of them being Negan escaped which was also and I mean we have so many things going on right now and I think that's why the Walking Dead is succeeding like we got Negan escaping we got the whispers we got the drama between the hilltop and Alexandria we got problems with the kingdom we got these exes on their back on their scars like there's so much going on and I love the how the Walking Dead went this complex with their story like they didn't even make it that like easy like let's just focus on the whispers that's it they added so many layers to the season which is why it's paying off and it's been the best season in a very long time and Gabriel and Negan are having these weekly sessions and that's what Gabriel refers it to at least and they're just talking and I guess Gabriel's trying to get through to Negan and because he's, he's such a like thick-headed person but um, at first I was thinking that maybe Gabriel left the door open to see if he escaped and I mean see if he would have escaped or come back but I guess not because Negan is going back to the sanctuary and we saw that in the next uh, preview for next um, you know season 9b and let me tell you that trailer was action-packed and I'm gonna be breaking it down in a set of videos so stay tuned for that 
But man, there are so many amazing moments in that trailer. But I'm very excited for Negan and his story in season nine B. Also, we also learn a little bit about what happened with the communities between the communities. Not too much, but Carol and Michonne were talking, and they were talking about how uh, Alexandria couldn't give the the kingdom supplies, and the kingdom is really falling apart. And we saw that in episode six. So. That's not the whole thing though, because obviously they wouldn't be this mad at each other, but that is part of it. And that's why they're setting up this fair, and comic book readers know what the fair is, and I'm very excited for that too. And it seems like Tara is upset at Michonne, and Kara a little bit. Like, I saw Kara go in and give Tara a hug, and then not give Michonne a hug, and I was like, whoa, what's going on here? So it's definitely problems with Alexandria, and maybe Michonne is having a tough time being a leader. We don't know for sure. We, we are going to find out in the second half, and then we're going to say for sure. But I do like how they're telling telling this story because it is a smart approach to tell it in a very slow way because every time the characters talk to each other that makes us interested like every time like Michonne talks to somebody from the hilltop I stop I'm, I'm like 100% focused and I want to hear every single word because I'm like I know these characters are mad at each other and I'm listening for every little thing they say because I want to know what the hell is going on so it's a smart move from the writers and you know the showrunner to do that because it makes it interesting and more intriguing for fans so another good thing they have done this season but let's move on and talk about Henry because he's definitely given Carl a story now he is in the cell and that whole story with him and the bunch of teenagers in the apocalypse like that whole thing that was there just for Henry to be put in the cell so that story wasn't that important but you know seeing all these teenagers in the apocalypse like it makes me miss Carl because Carl was the true teenage survivor in the apocalypse because all these other kids you know, they all grew up among, like, inside of walls, you know? Carl grew up outside in the world, and seeing how these kids are in the Apocalypse versus Carl, just, like, it's just so interesting to me. I mean, seeing these kids talk about, you know, their lives, I mean, I feel like, it's weird to me, I feel like I'm Carl when I went to Alexandria for the first time, because they were talking about going to school, and my parents have jobs, and this and that, and Carl was like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Did you, I mean, you guys never been outside these walls? And some of these kids have not been outside the walls in you know since they were little kids and they probably don't even remember that because as you grow up especially in the youth years you forget a lot about your childhood you know especially when you're very young versus being a teenager so you know Carl literally grew up in the wilderness and you know he, there will never be another kid like Carl Henry is obviously given that story and he's gonna progress to be more like Carl I guess but just seeing all these teenagers in the apocalypse makes me miss Carl. And I don't know why I got sentimental there for a second. But yeah, I'm just missing Carl. And I'm also liking Earl and um, Earl and Henry's relationship. And I wish we got more Tammy Rose too. And this is another thing that Walking Dead did an amazing job in Season 9. They have these characters in the background like Tammy and Earl but they're actually interesting every time they talk I'm interesting like at first all those extras in Alexandria like Scott and I mean Scott was useful I mean Scott and what the other guy's name is I forgot who died Tobin Tobin yeah Scott and Tobin like those characters like they were background characters but they're not even as interesting as Tammy Rose and Earl are so um you know, that's another thing that Walking Dead definitely stepped up with is their secondary characters because they make them all interesting, which is a great thing. And that was pretty much everything in the episode, I hope. And that last 15 minutes, I think, was amazing. And this first half of season 9 has been the best you know, half season of The Walking Dead in a very, very long time. And if you ask me what the best episode is this season, I'm going to have a tough time figuring it out. I don't know if it's this episode. I don't know if it's episode one. I don't know if it's going to be Rick's final episode. There's so many great episodes, uh, but that is going to be a video coming up soon, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to rank these episodes because this first half of season nine has been amazing. But yeah, the whispers are here and I'm very excited for it. We got about two and a half months until The Walking Dead returns, but don't you worry. We still got daily videos here because The Walking Dead, do you information comes out every day but later today we have our breakdown of the teasers coming out and the trailers and the sneak peeks so we have a bunch of good walk of the content coming out um to you know for your walker withdrawals throughout the two and a half months because i know i'm gonna be having some and the walk and talking about the walking dead is what gets me through it so i'm excited hopefully you guys did enjoy this video leave your thoughts and reviews in the comments down below because i'd love to hear from you guys and for daily walking that videos like this be sure to subscribe and i'll catch you guys soon